Yo, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of The Source. Continuing on with College Football Friday. It's rivalry week, so we got another rivalry game. North Carolina State versus North Carolina. Let's go. Welcome to The Source. The Source. Get the sewers. All right, NC State on the road at UNC. The line is North Carolina minus six and a half. Early action all over North Carolina. 71% of the tickets, 91% of the money on UNC as of Monday morning. Nothing changes at all here. Action is still leading North Carolina heavy. Line doesn't move a muscle. Still looking at UNC minus six and a half. So let's cap this game. If you subscribe to this channel, you already know the first step. We're running the numbers through the spreadsheet. According to the model, the line for this game should be UNC minus 2.27. That's a full four point lean on NC State here. So North Carolina comes off an ugly loss to Georgia Tech. Um, and I know a lot of people are saying it was a flat spot because they had already clinched the uh, ACC Atlantic, I think it is. So they had already clinched their division. But honestly, I'm not buying it. This team was nine and one. They had an outside chance of getting in the college football playoff and they were able to upset Clemson in the ACC championship. So there's no way that was a flat spot. They had a, a chance of the college football playoff. So I am not ignoring that game. I think it's a real concern that Georgia Tech was able to come into Chapel Hill and beat North Carolina straight up. UNC was 21 point favorites in that game and got beat at home. So how did that happen? Well, the two UNC turnovers did not help, but Georgia Tech had two turnovers also. So the turnover battle was even comes down to third down conversions. And this UNC team has been top 10 in converting third downs all season. Want to know how UNC did on third downs against Georgia Tech? Just four of 14. This is a team that averages over 50% third down conversions on the season, just four of 14. Now, will that happen again against NC State? I mean, probably not. Like I said, this team's been over 50% on third down all year. It was one bad game, but this NC State defense is towards the top of the country, allowing opponents to just convert just 34% of their third downs. So this is not the easiest spot for a bounce back for North Carolina's third down offense. This NC State defense is for real, 24th in the country. This will be the best defense North Carolina has seen all year. Up until this point, the highest rated defense they've seen has been Notre Dame, who's ranked 29th. And we all know how that game went. Notre Dame beat them by two touchdowns, I think. But one thing that's kind of tough for me to grasp with this NC State defense, you know how they always say defense travels? Well, when it comes to the NC State Wolfpack, defense does not travel well. Um, at home, the NC State defense is allowing just 14.3 points a game. On the road, 24.75 points a game. They're, average, they're allowing 10 more points a game on the road than they are at home. Now, to be fair to NC State, some of their tougher offensive opponents have been their road games. I mean, ECU, Clemson, Syracuse, and Louisville all played on the road. That's tough. But UNC is ranked 12th in the country in, in OFEI. This is one of the best offenses in the entire country. So it doesn't matter if they play tough competition on the road so far this year because they're playing tough competition again. Oh, and by the way, the North Carolina State defense isn't the only thing that isn't traveling well. You want to know how the NC State offense has fared in the two road games since Devin Leary got hurt? They scored nine points and 10 points. This offense was already pretty bad before they lost their quarterback. Then they brought in their backup freshman quarterback, MJ Morris. He's now hurt, he's not gonna play, which means they're going to split time at quarterback, I believe, between third string quarterback, Jack Chambers, and freshman practice squad quarterback, his name is Finley. Now for some good news for the NC State offense, because Lord knows they need it right now. North Carolina's defense has zero pass rush. 126 in the country in sack rate this year. They also allow 4.7 yards per carry as a team on the season. So even with a third string quarterback, it is not difficult to move the ball against a defense where you have all day to throw in the pocket and your running back is ripping off five yards a clip. I love this matchup. This is interesting. You got an offense that can't move the ball against a defense that can't make stops. And on the other side, you have an elite electric offense that can't be stopped against an elite defense that can't be scored on. Just to take it a little deeper on how bad North Carolina's defense is, they played some terrible offenses and they're still giving up points. I mean, Virginia scores 28, Miami scored 24, Georgia State scores 28. I don't see any reason why NC State, even with a third string quarterback, can't run their way to 24, 27 points. Which means to cover this six and a half point line, North Carolina's gonna have to put up at least 31 points in the game and North Carolina State has not allowed more than 30 points in a game this whole season. Which is why I'm taking another dog on rivalry week. I'm on the Wolfpack here. Give me NC State plus six and a half. 
Let's go. If anything changes with this bet, I will let you know on Twitter. So give me a follow there if you're interested. Also, if you want the final tickets that the staff gives out for every sport, um, just go ahead over to kylecrims.com or download the Sauce Network app. Thanksgiving weekend, a lot of football on. Remember to bet responsibly. Let's have ourselves a good one. I uh, hope you all have a great holiday.